There we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee is called to order at 7 p.m. on January 31, 2017. If you will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you kind ladies and gentlemen will introduce yourselves to the public, starting on the viewer's right. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. Mike Pierce. Sonny Kravitz. Steve Henderson. Mike Lowe. Danielle Augustine. Uh, Bob Ladd, Precinct Representative. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we need to approve minutes, and Barbara has sent the minutes of January 5 and January 12 to us. Let's try January 5, because they were forwarded to everybody. Uh, do, may I have a motion to approve January 5? Uh, You're moving January 5, second. Mr. Pluff is seconding. Okay, does anyone have any corrections on January 5 minutes? Appearing none, uh, I'll have hands to approve the minutes. Mr. Jones? I'll be abstaining since I haven't finished reading them. Okay. Mr. Jones is abstaining. And then the minutes of January 12. I'll move the five. So moved by Mr. Pierce, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Corrections, additions? Yes. Yes. Page 16. Page 16. The last paragraph. There are two corrections I'd like to see in that paragraph. The first sentence uh, refers to... Uh, my statement that I was at the board selection meeting at which they reviewed all of the articles. Actually, I said well, they reviewed all the so-called last-minute one articles. They didn't review all the articles at that meeting, and I didn't state that. So the extra the extra words are so-called last-minute before the word articles in the first sentence. Which what paragraph, please? Last one in the page sixteen. Yeah, you see where it's got article, pound sign, 44? What line? Just before that is the word articles. That's fine. See that? Am I on page 16? Yeah. Last paragraph. Page 16. Last paragraph. It's missed a lot. It's a big paragraph. Jim, take a minute and just show her. We're talking January 12th. Yes. Yeah. I believe it's on page 16. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'm looking at the PDF version. I, I make my, oh, my edits there. So you say the public private partnership made submission of Article 44? No. So the sentence that it says, Mr. Jones asked when Article 44 came in, noting that he had attended the Board of Selectmen's meeting at which they reviewed all of the articles. Yes. Prior to that word articles should be inserted so-called last-minute articles. Also in that paragraph is a sentence I would like inserted. Prior to the phrase, Mr. Jones summarized, should be inserted this sentence. You ready? Jones asked Selectman Waddle to come forward to explain the reason he voted against the article. Waddle declined the invitation. Waddell to come forward to explain the reason he voted against the article. Mm -hmm. 
Waddell, decli uh, Waddell declined the invitation. And that is all I have, thank God, okay. for amendments. Okay. Anyone else, Regina? I actually have a question on the December 20th minutes. Did we approve those last? We have, we have, we have uh, in addition to the 5th and the 12th, we have January 3rd and December 20th. We did January 3rd, yeah, and December 20th already, I believe. I believe you're correct. I actually have a, it's not really a correction, it's something that would make it a little bit more clearer. Just wait one second. Can we finish this one first? Yeah. Are we done Is with this? Is this it on the January 12th minutes? With the amendment that I've asked for, I will approve this. These okay. minutes. So, er, no, anybody else on January 12th? Okay. So, January 12th as corrected. In favor? Bob? I'm abstaining. Abstaining. Okay. Now, there. what date are you on, Regina? December 20th. <clears throat> on page... Oh, would you have those minutes? Yep. Just okay, I just wanted to add in if you had them or not. Because I have I a copy we had here if you need the 20th. it. No? Barbara said no. I would have added the 20th on tonight had I remembered that. Okay. Yeah, can we can we uh, just really email them to her? She can just send it to us because we have to approve it at our next meeting. I, I guess. thought we got that. Well, we'll just no. do it at our next meeting. Okay, but do you, okay, go ahead with your question. Well, it was just for Michael Pierce's motion to instruct Excuse the... Excuse me, can you give me the page number? Page? It's page three. And where the motion by Michael Pierce. Yeah. Um, it would make the minutes more accurate to add these words at the start of the motion with reference to the selectmen's right to know law request received last week. Mr. Pierce moved and then to instruct the budget committee. You didn't say that, did you? No, but that's, that's verbiage to give it the, the uh, context. context right? Is that the context in which you were speaking? Yeah, because then we were referring to All right. there we go. All right. what sure. there's, there's I don't know what else. context you were speaking. Well, what else was there? That's the letter we received from the selectmen. I don't know if we wanted to be barbecued today or tomorrow. I asked the question, you answered it. Thank you, Mike. Well, then you would accept that as yeah, as a fine. as a clarification in the in the motion, or I can put it outside the motion, whatever you no, you can put it right before the motion that she suggests. I have no problem with that. Okay, and how did it go? Um, with reference to the selectmen's right to know law request received last week, and then Mr. Pierce moved, yeah. and then whatever you already have there. Okay, and then our next regular meeting in February to do the precinct, we can just approve the outlying minutes. Right. Okay, and Barbara is working on the minutes, or will be working on the minutes of October 18th. Those are minutes that Mrs. Latimer did, but everything got scrambled up in her computer. And so Barbara's going to have to go back and recapture and get that done. So we want to make sure that's all right. So we, we all set on, oh, okay, Regina, we will, I made a note, we will take care of that when we approve the December 20th minutes. Okay. okay. Madam Chair, yes, do, you, do you want to try January 3rd, which we, is I s also... I swear we did that. No, we did the 5th. We haven't met. We did the 5th. But we haven't okay. done the 3rd. Okay. Come on, our next meeting agenda, Madam Chair. Yes. As you know, I we, called you today and said, which minutes are we doing today right. so I can read them? And I had the 5th and the 12th. Right. Okay. So you want okay. 1-3. We're going to do 1-3 and 1-20 the next And meeting. one twenty. Okay. And tonight night should be pretty it's okay. 1220 1220 yeah, 12 now the next thing I'm going to do for us is the revenues we have to vote on the estimated revenues 
prior to the deliberative session on Saturday. Now going from the piece that Christy has provided us. These are the 2017 estimated revenues, correct, Madam Chair? What? You're talking about the 2017. 2017 estimated revenues and on page which eight, get adjusted in October November of every year and that adjustment is what affects the taxes but that the has taxes, no effect at all on yes taxes. it does no, no it, it is will have effect on taxes next fall no this is, yes the board of selectmen slash town manager sends in an adjusted along with every governing body in the state sends an adjusted estimated tax in October November time frame it is that adjustment that is used to set the taxes. Then, yes, but not for the next year. Yeah, the right. next year is, you go by what the... Uh, they set the tax rate in October. Right, the next year. That's After it. they receive the revised revenue estimates. No, there's no revised revenue estimate. Once they set the taxes, the, the next revenue estimate is for the next year. Oh, next year, right. This is 2017 revenue, which we need to approve how can we approve 2017 revenue I don't it's get estimated that. revenue just like the estimated budget it's a requirement you already guys as you board of selectmen have already done this uh and it's just kind of an exercise that goes back in ancient times that we still keep doing <laughs> the bottom line is mary louise is saying something that i have not heard before in my four years on this board okay can i right? The I fact have, is, you guys, every October and November do an uh, right. revised estimated revenue. It is that revision that is used to set taxes. Right. This number has no meaning at all in terms of taxes. It is nothing more than like a, you know, like your appendix. You can take it out or leave it in. It doesn't matter. No one, it doesn't all matter right. at all. I would like to, the town council has put together a memorandum that has concerns from the Board of Selectmen. Now, we're always talking about communication and how you want us to know exactly where we're coming from. This is relevant to the estimated This is relevant to the meeting tonight. No, to the re revenue the estimate. Right revenue. Now. Revenue. Well, I don't understand why we're talking about revenues right because, now. Because we but as a technical pro forma matter, we do need to approve the, uh -huh. these estimates, but they don't really have any meaning, and that was the only point I was making. Let's just vote on it and move on. Right. Okay. So do we I need a motion? I still move the whatever the number this, is. This is right on test. page 8 of 10 of the MS 737 that you all should have in your hands. It was attached. Uh, Rusty brought in the pages. It's estimated revenues for 2017 are 13,017395. And that matches the selectmen's estimated revenues column. And then it shows actual revenues prior year, which is now irrelevant. That's been handled. So I will accept. So moved. What? Second. Barbara? Second? You seconded right? No. No. Uh, Steve seconded. Okay. So Mr. I Jones. A, I have a small problem with this. Yes. I did not jump from seven or eight, eight million up to 13 million. I have, I have no idea. I well, don't that's do why we need to have this discussed when there's people here who can answer the question. But I refuse to vote on this under these circumstances because we should be have more information. Some of the may should be here to answer the question. This is the form. I understand that's the form. I also have the pages in the budget <coughs> that no, do not reflect the 13 million you're talking about. So I'm a but little that, confused. The figures in the budget book are passe at the moment. I am assuming, I have to assume that the finance director went over her records and when she prepared the MS 737 she used her current figures. Mr. Pierce. Not debating Pierce, I just want to Pierce. understand what you just said. Yeah. You just said, as I understand it right, mm -hmm. the number that Mary Louise the chair just cited mm -hmm. is at variance with the number that was in the budget book given to us. Is that correct? That's correct. And it has it has the correct number for what it is for uh, <clears throat> 16, but when it goes to 17 which is estimated, of course, like all this stuff is, it only moves up, it, it, it moves up about $4,000 from the budget amount for... What's the number six, in the budget book for 2015? Uh, six, six, 68-71-741. Well, what's the date on that sheet, Michael? There should be a date in the upper right-hand corner, or... Michael, I was asking what the budget book said that we gave, we were given in November. 
for estimated revenue. I don't have my budget book with me tonight. I didn't think we'd need it. Well, this isn't even on the agenda. Well, it, the estimated I, I know. I it forgot. It has an agenda. To get it. Well, I typed the agenda out a little ahead it's of time. It's printed 11 4 16. Yes. So what's the what's the estimated revenue that was printed on 11 4 for 17 for for the year 2017? Okay, six million eight seventy one seven forty one. So it's that number versus the one the chair decided, which is 13 million. It's over double that. Yes. Thank you. That's my question. That's why I just wanted I, to get clarity on that. I was talking to somebody about this today, and I said, "What in the hell are we doing here?" And that's the question. What in the hell is going on? Because we never have had this kind of a jump, number one. And number two, it's way out of sight if you look at the last couple of years. Thirteen million is nearly twice as much as Mr. Jones said. So I'm confused about not only the numbers, and it'd be nice to have somebody here answer the questions, because it makes it difficult for a budget committee member to answer the questions, especially in light of that jumping up so much. Plus, if you look at 2016, the estimated number was in the beginning was somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, uh, I forget exactly what it was but it was six million some chain okay and when they talk when they changed it to uh, but they go to give the reports to the state it was six million seven ninety nine thirty four so it's and then it ended up being uh, almost a million over that uh, and that's very confusing no, I mean, when they set the tax rate, I'm sorry, I quoted the wrong number, 6612533 when the revenues were actually turned over to the state for the tax rate. Right. So I'm confused as to why we're getting this $13 million for 17 right now because that is twice as much money and we have no explanation as to why it's there. Right. Yes. What you're pointing out is a glaring inaccuracy or inconsistency for between what we were given in our budget book in November and what we subsequently received. Mm -hmm. Yet another one. Mm -hmm. Unlike the other ones, this has no meaning though. Because that number, whatever it is, it could be $2 billion. It still is not going to be used to affect the tax rate. I have no problem with that, Mr. Jones. So given that it's a basically an irrelevancy as in terms of, it is inaccurate, I agree. All right, or it certainly it varies. But it doesn't have any meaning. It's, it's a, it's a difference without a distinction. Well, if okay. it's if it's errors on the high side, which it appears to be right now, that would make the budget revenues that uh, that we uh, expect to have this next year possibly lower than what we actually higher than what we actually have. We are anticipating thirteen million the number, in revenue. The number is not used for anything. I know that. I appreciate that, Mr. Jones, but the numbers are printed on this piece of paper given to the Budget Committee. Therefore, it should have some basis for being there. I agree with your general Other than just principle. The paper I agree with your general principle. I'm just trying to move forward. Yeah. And, and We're not going to get any answers on it yeah. tonight, so I don't okay. see the point. Well, I can't see any point in having session. a meeting where we're going to approve something when we have no idea what we're approving. Well, that's we my have problem. With a it. figure here from the finance director. Mm -hmm. In print, mm -hmm. on page eight of ten. Now, if I recall, the figure you're referring to in your book mm -hmm. would have been a figure generated in November. Mm -hmm. But I believe that we generally get a substantial amount from the state. Do we not, Rusty? In December, I don't think the figures that you have in that book accommodate the end of year figures. If I may, Madam Chairman, because I have the, the update of the financials from January 20th from the Christie that says. Seven million nine seventy five five ninety five, which are the revenues for this last year, which was inconsistent with what we have on a lot of things. So I'm really confused about why you're going down the avenue of saying that the thirteen million is okay because I don't see any justification for that at all. But that first pass for the end of December. I mean, Christy explained that in the meeting two weeks yes. ago. That is just very preliminary. She's well, still working on right now. But the figure here the that she said that you submitted to the state should be the most accurate figure to date, unless she did something today. But this is all we have to go on. What's the date of this document? 
Well, it's after our public hearing because we all signed, remember, we all signed the MS-737. I understand So this that is part. appended to the 737. I understand So that. as of our public hearing and as of the end of the year, this is the fig these are the figures we've got. I understand and you understand they can change. But we need to go to the deliberative session having approved an estimated, estimated revenue for 2017. So trying once again, if I may have a motion to go to the deliberative session in the amount showing on page 8 of 10 of your paperwork that you just got tonight, 13 million oh one seven three nine five. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I understand your statement to be that we must vote on this for it to go to the delivery session. Yes. Wouldn't that statement also apply that we must do that in order to go to the public hearing? I, it, did we do, and I, the public hearing was kind of a mush. Well, when we did the public hearing, we had the numbers we in the budget book. But so we didn't, we didn't vote have on. this. We no, never voted on it. we didn't on. vote on that. Right. So, so we didn't have this anyway. So that, that brings the entire veracity of the budget of the, of the budget committee's public hearing into question. One could argue that. Or you could argue that we didn't really need to have a vote on that for the public hearing, in which case whatever argument you're going to use for that would also apply to the deliver session. Well, I think just to save everybody a pile of trouble, if we just authorize the estimated figure that finance has provided to us it's certainly not going to hurt anything. Could you take, may, just somebody make a motion and a second? I move. Henderson seconded. Okay. So why don't we take a vote? We'll okay. get it out of the way. You're moving the 13 million oh one seven three nine five. No, it's already moved. Was that by somebody else? I... I moved it. Henderson seconded. Henderson seconded. Right. Okay. Right We're discussed out. All right. In I'm favor? Three, four, five. Opposed? One, two. Abstaining? This, two. This form here yeah. doesn't match that one. What form uh -huh. doesn't match what? Well, Peter, that doesn't that say was great that we actually million. got together on a vote. I know, that was well, this, <laughs> is the new, this is the newest one that we yeah. just got today. First time for everything. I don't think it was a first, but it was, <laughs> it's not it was a, a special warm, it was a warm special feeling. Well, I didn't even know we were going to be well, talking the about the select. Well, I'm sure she's still updating this. Yes, my dear? She is. Can I have the nose, please, Mr. Pluff and Mr. Pierce? And Barnes, Barnes and, and Jones. Mr. Jones and yeah. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Staining? Tell Christy to stop estimating. <laughs> Christy has been working away I know. diligently, I know. and she's trying to get you know, ready for Saturday, so. The last... Busting it, yeah. The last thing I want to discuss with you this evening, because I do think it's time we discussed it, is the problem with paying um, Attorney Gould. Uh, I have chewed this over. I've had advice from a whole pile of people, and I think that what we need to do... Uh, I considered seeing if we could raise the money amongst ourselves, and I have no idea what it is. He has not presented a bill. Um, we have a line in our budget for legal expenses. I make a motion we table this discussion on the attorney's fees. I have some information okay. that might add <coughs> okay. to it. And a motion on the table. Yeah. Motion on the table. Well, the motion no, hasn't second. been seconded. And yes, it has. We need to... Ooh. Did you second it? No. No. <laughs> Just I thought you said something about seconding. No, I said no. there's no second. Oh, no second. Minute. Okay. No second. Am I doing kindergarten here? Yes. Okay, Regina, go ahead. Okay. This is, like I stated earlier, but it wasn't the topic of discussion that I didn't even realize we were going to be discussing tonight. I have so, it on the agenda. This is a memorandum prepared by town council mm -hmm. that echoes some points from the Board of Selectmen. Um, where where is that, Regina? Have we seen that yet, or what? No, this I'm the only one oh, that has okay. this. So, okay. points in connection with uh, this budget committee meeting mm -hmm. that was called to order. Uh, there is. I'm just going to read through this. It's easiest for me to do. Yeah, go ahead. There is no good reason for the budget committee to have been called by Chairman Wolseley to meet on January 31st. 
This meeting was called by email from Mary Louise to Christina Osman dated January 13th, in which she states the cable crew is not needed. The stated purpose and agenda Mary Louise emailed to Christina is limited to approving minutes of December 20th and review options for compensation of Attorney Gould in regard to Board of Selectmen refusal to allow committee to use its legal budget line. Mm -hmm. These are all attachments I have if anyone's interested right. in looking at them. Okay. But Attorney Gould has stated in his email to me dated January 13th, this is Mark mm -hmm. writing this, yeah. on which Mary Louise is copied, states that he is not going to bill, not going to bill for the time he has spent unless it is able to find another way to pay us. The timing of this meeting is suspicious. Mary Louise called this meeting on January 13th, right after the selectmen's meeting. On January 9th, when Selectman Bean and others took her to task for her actions in having Attorney Gould and having him backdate his invoice. This meeting is being called right before the deliberative session on February 4th and right after Mary Louise signed up to run for Selectman. Mary Louise keeps pr pressing me to render conclusions before the deliberative session and before the general election about whether the right to know law was violated by all the emails. She thinks the right to know law is not violated and somehow wants to prove that point now. It will take some time to wade through all the emails and analyze them. The budget committee never voted to hire attorney Gould and Mary Louise doing so was sent what the but so was sent what the budget committee voted to do at the meeting on December 20th. The minutes of December 20th meeting showed that a motion by Michael Pierce Mary Louise was directed to find an appropriate attorney to assist the budget committee and to have that attorney attend a meeting of the budget committee to answer questions and gain approval of the hiring of a lawyer. This is not what she did. On December 29th, she signed a long and detailed retainer agreement with a Concord attorney that required a $2,000 retainer to be charged against at the hourly rate of $275 per hour and to replenish same monthly to get it back up to 2,000. The minutes of the December 20th meeting did not come out even in draft form until after January 9th selectmen's meeting. The right to know law requires them to be posted in five days. Based on what the budget committee actually voted to do, to have Mary Louise bring an attorney to them to decide whether to hire the attorney, there was no reason for Fred, who was there at the December 20th meeting, or me, who was not there and did not watch that meeting until during the Christmas holidays, to tell Mary Louise at the December 20th meeting, or to call her thereafter to tell her that the Board of Selectmen make the ultimate decision whether to hire outside counsel and whom to hire. Mary Louise had Attorney Gould's office backdate his $2,000 invoice for the retainer to try and get it paid out of the 16 budget. Mary Louise filled out and requested a requisition form at the Finance Department on January 3rd after the year had turned attaching and support the December 29th 16 retainer from Attorney Gould. Mary Louise wrote an email to Christy and Fred dated January 3rd, stating, please be sure that the money for the retainer is taken out of the Budget Committee 16 budget line. An invoice dated December 29th 16 from Attorney Gould was presented to finance, but this was not the invoice originally generated by Attorney Gould, which was dated January 3rd, 2017. Attorney Gould revealed in his email to me dated January 8th that Mary Louise had the January 3rd invoice redated to December 29th at her request for the purpose of paying the retainer out of the Budget Committee's 16 budget subline of 2000 for legal. The fact of this redating came to light in a string of emails sent to Christy by Mary Louise herself dated January 4th, 2017 with subject redated invoice. The Finance Department charges bills for services to the budget year in which the services were performed, not the year they were billed. Attorney Gould's January 8, 2017 email to me reveals that he first conferred with Mary Louise on December 29, 2016. At his stated public interest rate of 275 per hour, he would have to have spent eight hours with her to justify the full $2,000 being billed in 16. Mary Louise is playing fast and loose with year-end invoice, doing precisely what she wrongfully accused Fred and the Board of Selectmen doing with purchase orders at the end of December 2015. Attorney Gould's 275 per hour rate, his retainer, replenishment policy, and his charging for travel time from Concord and back all would have needed to be carefully evaluated and compared to other attorneys' rates before he was hired. Attorney Peter Laughlin, whom the town already uses, charges only 190 per hour, 
and without a retainer, whereas Gould charges 275. Attorney Laughlin is an author of treatises on municipal law as well, and is well known and highly respected statewide. Attorney Laughlin's travel time from Portsmouth would only have been a fraction of Gould's travel time to and from Concord. Attorney Gould's retainer letter of December 29, 2016 notes that he will be charging for travel time. So if he comes to Hampton, he will be charging for at least two hours of downtime at $275 per hour or $550. The Budget Committee should have been presented with these expensive realities of hiring Attorney Gould to evaluate before Mary Louise committed all 2,000 of the Budget Committee's legal line to this one attorney by signing the 20, December 29, 2016 retainer letter herself. This was not only an unauthorized move on her part against the Committee's direction at the December 29, 2016 meeting, it was poor financial management. The Committee would be getting very few hours for its $2,000. There is no need to hire counsel just to determine whether to answer the selectman's right to know law request. The emails to a quorum of the budget committee are already clearly governmental records under New Hampshire, RSA 91-A colon 1-A3. The obligation to produce these governmental records in response to a proper RSA 91-A request, which the selectman's was, is not one that requires counsel. Until these <coughs> communications are produced and evaluated, you do not even get to know the real question. Whether it, which is whether they violated the right to know law. The three posted opinions of New Hampshire and HMA legal counsel already state that the right to know law has been violated. The end result after completing the analysis of all the emails will be a training session for the committee to prevent future violations. Even if, if a petition article for 41 to abolish the budget committee passes, there will be one more cycle of budget committee's operations to go through. Madam Chairman, if I may, I don't mind you reading a long thing that, that, that might be correct, but in that case, there's several very important errors in what you've said. So I, I want to strike that whole thing from the record because it's all a bunch of hogwash as far as oh, I'm concerned. Well, not as far as I'm concerned. Like, I'd like to ask some okay. questions, please. Uh, who is the author of that document you just read? Town Council. And who was that document sent to? Me. And only you? Because I was coming here tonight. So it was sent directly from. Well, actually, did you get it? Maybe I've seen you got. It. You've seen it. Yeah, no one else's, right? As far as we know. There's no copy for. And when? Well, we can have a copy if she needs it. And, and when did the selectman direct? I got. You'll okay. get a trial. Get it. <coughs> when did the selectman direct You'll, the town attorney? When we found out about this meeting. To write that document. I posted the meeting a week ago. I when now, if we have a copy of the document from the town attorney, we can at least digest it rather than well, having I can have to read email something. It to you. Because it's, <laughs> if I may reclaim my time, Mr. Pierce. I was speaking first. Sorry, Mr. I Trump. got the chair subsequently from the. Wait, just wait one second. Go ahead. I was asking at what meeting the selectman uh, instructed their attorney to draft that document. This was something that happened between me and Mark. Because uh -huh. Mark had points he wanted to make. Yes. And the only other right, selection so this, this that I am aware of that knows of this document is Rusty. So the, that, the, the creation of that document is at your instruction individually, and the publication of that document, which you just did, uh, is at your discretion individually. Correct? Yes. Okay. okay now, I want, to, I want to observe that, you know, there were, there were several points. Now, by the way, I would like a copy of that, if you so we could have. Is you still uh, uh, and can? And I, I don't have you, it in electronic form, but I can get it. No, it's excellent. I would love it in electronic form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, send it to me. Everybody, much preferred. Okay. Always. All right. Save the treats. Now. Now. I, are you a set? No. Okay, because I have a couple of things to say. That was a lot of in that in that document mm -hmm. uh, to consume especially, you know, uh, with your ear. I'd like to read it to be more accurate, but when it started out, it started out, and it sounded like a political document, not a legal document, mm -hmm. frankly. Well, we don't understand why we're having this meeting tonight. Well, just because you don't understand and, you're, and, and, and your lawyer doesn't understand doesn't mean that there's not a valid reason. He's actually proclaiming under the guise of being a lawyer that there is no reason for a meeting. Well, clearly he said that we're going to be in the agenda going to be approving minutes. Well, just merely meeting to approve minutes is a valid reason to have a meeting. 
Review options so, for compensation of attorney Gould. No, no, no. That's that's one point that you may question was it was proper to be on the, the agenda or not, and I, I can see that's a very argumentative point. I tend to concur with, with that opinion. All right? It seems to me absurd. I've said that to the chair individually. It is absurd to talk about how to pay for a bill that has never been seen, never will be seen, because it will never be generated. Okay? It's just an absurd topic to have. But that does not lead to the conclusion that that attorney is specifying in the letter that there was no reason to meet at all. She wanted to meet also to approve minutes. That's a very valid reason to have a meeting. So his conclusion in there that there was no reason, and I'm, I believe I'm quoting that accurately, he concluded, well, actually we said, he concluded no reason for a meeting. And, no, we and, said we didn't understand what the reasoning was. And, and you, if you go further, you'll see that it actually said there was there is no reason. Well, what is the reason? Well, I told you, there are there are, on the invisible to me agenda. You know what I find ridiculous that he has to spend the time. I agree. There is no this. reason he shouldn't just be all because of three or four people. I That's agree. He shouldn't be spending the time, and, 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 and perhaps you should have. Because you haven't noticed we're working on real important things. And perhaps you should have taken that into consideration when you individually directed him to take that time. Well, I didn't want to miss anything. All right. Okay, let's, well, gee. Let's Let's get control of the I don't want you to miss anything okay, either, so ladies, you know, let's not yell at each other. Ladies, let's just it talk sounds about like it. right now this meeting yeah. is for a campaign Enough. and that's it. Okay. That's exactly what it sounds oh, like. Yeah. It wait, sounds like a political right. document. Well, I'm okay. not him. Hey, wait. What? Wait, wait. Yeah, I finish. Okay. I the well, wait. I, let me just get a, a couple of words in here because I have talked to Attorney Gerald a couple of times. First of all, that letter landing dated December. 14th got some members of the budget committee upset that appeared to be a, a threatening type of communication uh, I have talked to attorney Gerald a couple of times we have a little concern about getting counsel paid and it wasn't easy to find counsel in the week between Christmas and New Year's but nevertheless when I talked with Rusty and Vice Chair Waddell around the 12th of January, roughly, I asked the two of you if I could meet with you. We were talking about compensating counsel, but we also uh, talked about a couple of other things with the emails. And Rusty, you said that you gave me permission to call Attorney Buckley, right? Right. Now, I didn't know because nobody told me, because it had been six years since I chaired the Budget Committee, I didn't know that there was a list of approved people who could call the NHMA. So when I called Attorney Buckley and got a rather rude reception, I was huffing and puffing, and one member of the committee said to me, well, gee whiz, why don't you just, uh, you know, call or talk to Attorney Gerald? So the next time I was in the town office, I said, you know, what's, what's going on? Uh, Attorney Buckley was rather rude to me. Uh, haven't you notified him? Or if you haven't, would you tell him that Nick Bridle is no longer the chair? So and please inform him that I'm the chairman. And I walked off. I, I saw him face to face in his office. And I said, you know, would you do that for me? And I, I took off. I expected that would be done. Shortly after that, the Board of Selectmen voted to cut everybody off, except for the five top favored entities. When you told me that I could ca call Attorney Buckley, Rusty, I did. And we had a half hour, very cordial chat. He was kind enough to forward to me the attachments that I forwarded to all of you, including the amicus curiae brief. And one thing he said to me, and, and the only suggestion he made to me was, you want to be using BCC, blind carbon copy, whatever the heck that is. As soon as he told me that, that is what I started doing. I had a couple of other conversations with him, but then I asked, <laughs> I asked him about the selectman's authority to have control over the budget committee, zoning board, and planning board budgets with the legal line in them. I said, can, I know the selectmen have control and the town manager has control over the departments, 
Planning, Zoning, and Budget Committee are not departments. So I asked Attorney Buckley if he could clarify this for me, and he got back to me with this email. It is with regret that I must inform you that the charge I was given by your select board was that I was limited to giving right to know law advice only to you as chairman, but rather than the, re let's see, uh, your questions do not deal with the right to know law, but rather the relationship among town attorney, town manager, and budget committee. I'm unable to provide legal advice to the chair of budget committee in these operations. We are paying $17,000 a year to the NHMA, and they are very helpful. When they're accessible. But when they're accessible. But Steve can tell you from past experience, police officers have been calling. I've called them in the past, no problem. Second consideration, Attorney Gerald told me that he, he, I told him, I said, I'll tell you, because I bumped him to an, into him in the town office, and I said, I talked with Attorney Buckley. I did exactly what he told me to do. I've been using BCC ever since. And Gerald said, well, I don't agree with that. He said, that's, that, that's a risky thing, too. So now I've got Attorney Buckley from the NHMA telling me one thing. I've got Attorney Gerald telling me something else. Then we have a series of emails between Attorney Buckley and Mark Gerald, um, January 4th. Mark, I concur that the prohibition on electronic communication found in RSA 91A was probably not intended to deny public bodies the use of email to receive information only communications. Given the ruling in the Porter case, it nevertheless is safer to always ensure the emails sent to a quorum are distributed using the blind CC method of distribution so that no one member who receives the email could hit reply all and possibly create an illegal electronic meeting. I also agree with your assessment that a number of the emails you cite among Hampton Budget Committee members constitute violations of RSA 91A. Um, I spoke to Mark Gerald last Thursday when I was in the town office, and I said, Mark, you and I have known each other since you came on as the attorney in this town. Why couldn't you pick up the phone instead of sending out all these certified letters and getting everybody upset and demanding copies of emails? You have about every email I sent because I copy you, like Bob and Ginny, on every confounded email I produce. And I said to him, just, you know, just what do you want me to do? And he said, use the mail. Now further, the uh, email here from uh, Attorney Buckley once again. If the, good morning, Mark. If the Porter versus Sandwich order on the merits dated August 14, 2015, is interpreted in a particular manner. I would agree that Woolsey's emails dated 11:29 and 12:1 created the opportunity for a reply by a quorum of a public body. In that light, and based upon Judge Temple's interpretation of RSA 91A, those emails would be Ill illegal electronic meetings because they were sent to a quorum of the Hampton Budget Committee, and there was an ability to communicate contemporaneously. This interpretation is founded on the facts in Porter being almost the same situation involving the Woolsey emails. In Porter, it was the chairman of the ZBA who sent the email to the entire membership of the ZBA. And the same is true concerning the emails courtesy copied by Woolsey to a quorum of the Hampton Budget Committee. Caution must be exercised, however, because the Porter decision could be interpreted to mean that any time a quorum of a public body receives an email from an elected or appointed official from the same municipality that would create an ability to communicate contemporaneously and therefore constitute an illegal electronic meeting. So now I have town council, and we're not lawyers. None of us are lawyers. And we're struggling through this stuff. I said to Mark, have you, you got my packet, Rusty, 
that was given directly to you as chairman, copies of my emails in here, most of them begging for information, and I said, have you gone through those? Most of the people on the budget committee have given you their copies, their information. And he said, oh, I've been too busy. Excuse but me. But he wasn't too busy to write that, was he? <laughs> Well, he wasn't this is the whole point. He wasn't too busy to write that. No, now, but you know what? He has, been, he has been very busy. Yes, right? well, but he's not. After sending us threatening letter via certified mail. Do you know how many mail, emails there are to go through? Threatening. Hundreds. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not finished. Now I have communicated with Attorney Buckley, and when you and, and Vice Chairman Waddell and I met, Rusty, uh, and we were talking about the emails. I said, I really, in hindsight, I understand I should not have sent the email to everybody saying people were beefing about pay raises. And you said, yeah, but that, you know, that wasn't uh, the Mount Vesuvius volcano. But now what, situa what situation are we in here? We've got town council telling us one thing on that BCC, Attorney Buckley who's being paid through the NHMA to give us another opinion, and he said, go right ahead and do that. And if you read, and I hope all of you read the amicus brief, but what caught my eye, and it's an excellent brief, attorneys Buckley, Johnston, and uh, Burns collaborated on this amicus curiae, friend of the court brief, and the Porter versus Sandwich situation. And this is the Supreme Court. This is where it will be advertised. Uh, Attorney Gerald told me he agreed with Judge Temple's ruling, which is only a superior court ruling. But he said Judge Temple is a smart young man. Well, I don't know whether he is or not. But we're caught in a legal tangle here. Um, on page 16 of the amicus brief, attorneys Buckley and Johnston and Burns say, similarly, the Municipal Association's booklet cited above draws a clear distinction between two situations. In the first, a land use board member sends an email to all other members expressing an opinion on a matter before the board, but no member sends a substantive response. In the second, a substantive discussion ensues via email. Conclusion, in the first situation, identical to what happened here, there is no violation. In the second, the exchange clearly violates the law because it is a use of communications outside a meeting to circumvent the law. CNH, local government center, etc. The effect of the trial court's ruling, that's the superior court, if allowed to stand, would be to prohibit any member of a public body from ever sending an email to other members on any subject within the body's jurisdiction. Again, this ignores the practical reality of life in the 21st century. When the email does not lead to anything remotely resembling a discussion or deliberation or an action, there is no reason for the action to be prohibited. In its 2004 final report, the Right to Know Study Commission noted with favor Justice Holmes' comment that the machinery of government would not work if it were not allowed a little play in its joints. This court is urged to bear that admonition in mind and not make it impracticable for local public bodies to conduct their business when there is no legitimate threat to the public's right to know. Question? Yes, sir. Did Montreal find any responses to Mary Louise's emails? Dave Mora did one to yeah. my to my young um, to my knowledge. Pay that's all I know of right now. So Madam we have a tempest Chair. in a teapot here. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I know we don't have a tempest well, in a teapot. I just it want depends to... on, on I suppose on which teapot you perceive yourself oh, well, in. Oh, right. You know, from my point of view, that was a political document. All the noise that's been taking place yeah. has been uh, not pursuing substance, but pursuing political ends. Yes. Electoral ends, more specifically. Now, I don't want to get involved in that. I generally try to stay away from that stuff. You know, I focus on what's budget committee stuff for the budget committee. I don't care about your campaign for selectmen. I, I don't care about other people's campaign against Mary Louise for selectmen. All right? 
It's all interesting noise when I'm in the mood for noise. But when I come to a budget committee meeting, although I ought to be prepared for noise, I still don't want to hear noise. <laughs> and that's too much noise again, and I just like this, this thing to be over with. What we can learn that is not noise and is substantive from this entire exercise is that while the budget committee is an independently elected body, and the planning board is an independently elected body, and the zoning board of adjustment is an independently elected body, etc., which conveys to the average voter that we are independent bodies, yet this recent experience clearly tells us that we do not have independent control of the resources we need to do our job. And can any body be truly considered to be independent when it does not have independent control of the resources it needs to do its job? When it must go to another body and say, may I please, in order to have resources that it perceives it needs, can you really expect anyone to believe that we are truly independent? Yeah, we may be elected independently, but it would appear we are subservient in terms of gaining any necessary resources to do our job. And really, that either needs to be addressed or the voters simply should accept the fact that we're not independent. Neither is the planning board, neither is the zoning board of adjustment, nor anyone else that has to go say, may I please, to another body to get the resources it needs to do its job. And that's the only substance that I have derived out of the last couple months on this topic. Everything else has been a bunch of noise. And I wish it would just stop. I agree with you. Then stop. But Please. I move. We stop. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Meg. Uh, okay. Is that up? What's it's the second? <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> All of this could be resolved. Can we take a vote? People, people, uh, people would just wait what one second. Can here. I? Wait a second. I need the substance of the what's, what you stopped. Take a vote. Go ahead. Stop. Stop, uh, stop uh, addressing the, the topic of uh, the uh, RSA 91A. No. No. Of of the lawyers' non-existent bill. Okay. That was the topic we were supposed to be discussing, right? Okay. Well, and all the noise that goes with it. Yeah. yeah she gets that in there with it. And all the noise that goes okay. with it, correct. Yeah. Stephen has... Tim, I got one thing I want to say, okay? Sure. From the beginning of this, okay, my gut feeling was it was nothing but a witch hunt, okay? And I'm going to throw it out as that, okay? And it was some personal, and it should have never gotten to where it got to today. It's been a waste of time. It's been a waste of energy on all the members here. It's been a waste of time on the slugmen. It's been a waste on everybody, okay? We've all been involved in it. But when the public finds out how minuscule this issue was, and that's going to come out soon, then that's what's going to play the whole game of what went on here, okay? We've wasted so much time and energy on this, and I can't wait for the public to find out that this was nothing more than some minuscule personality issue that came out that never should have been addressed in front of this I board. hope you're right, but I believe the truth has great difficulty yeah. getting out sometimes. Yeah. This may very well be a case when so many are so heavily invested in what is not true. Mm -hmm. well, that's what I've seen in this. The, the bottom line here is that people should be able to pick up the phone and communicate. Okay. Yeah. Sonny, wait, wait one let second. Me, let me try to simplify this. The Board of Selectmen, in my opinion, their job is to hire the town manager. Sure. They're not to micromanage everything, okay? Town manager presents a budget. Since you've hired the town manager, you're going to approve it. The budget committee represents a broad segment of the community. Ex selectmen, representatives from the police, representatives from the beach, representatives from the school, people in the community who have an interest. Okay? All right? So it's our job to present a budget. Mike Pierce. And Jerry Canoy last year raised the issue of the price of gasoline with the state contract. It's resulted in savings, what, $40,000? Okay. Another item in the budget, one of the bonds is paid off. There's $300,000 available now. 519. Regina, remember that. 519. 
you know, I mean, the Board of Selectmen's not going to take the audit. All, all the Board of Selectmen said it's a great job, great job when every department presented. The Budget Committee takes the, takes the, takes the budget apart and looks at it and, try, and works to, to make it better for the community. There's a tremendous liability out there with the pension plan. You know what's going to happen there. The state isn't contributing. It, the, the shortfall in 10 years or 15 years is going to come on the town. All right? We're trying to address these things. So it's, you know, all this could have been avoided. Mark could have come to, to a meeting or called Mary Louise. Yes. Okay? Because what, what I was thinking, Lamey's has a booty call room. She was the last witch that prosecuted in Hampton. This is a personal vendetta because I found out from Mary Louise that she made the motion to remove Phil Bean from the chair of the Board of Selectmen. Sure well, I wasn't aware of it. But Phil Bean removed, being removed from the chair. He was the Board of Selectmen. Yes, I want to tell I you a little about story. Phil Bean because I've asked him. Madam Chair, I think we should slip off. I don't this see subject. what Phil Bean has anything to do yeah, with this I think this is just digging a bigger yeah. hole. Well, so this is a witch hunt. The hole is digging. Well, we know it's a witch hunt. Well, not, as far as I'm not, aware, it's not, not a witch hunt. When people do, if well, the Board of Selectmen had done the same thing, you'd be all over. If the Board of Selectmen had backdated an invoice or a document, it wasn't backdated. It wasn't backdated. It was Stunning voted line. on Stop December Sunny. Sunny. Well, Sunny. You're absolutely Wait. Sunny, I appreciate facts. with what you have to say. Phil Bean doesn't need to get brought up. I'll tell you something else about Phil Bean in the Stop. budget committee. Stop. 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 Okay. Mr. I stood in Mr. Pierce's kitchen because I do not have a printer and I do not have a scanner. And I stood in Mr. Pierce's kitchen on December 29th when he was kind enough to print out the... Uh, engagement letter for me. He stood in his kitchen and watched me sign that letter and date it. I gave him an original copy. I kept an original copy, and I mailed the third original. He emailed it to him right on the computer. You, you, he scanned and emailed, but I mailed the original to Concord, December 29th, right. 2016. That's right. So what now that was be the week between well it was the week between christmas and new well, that's year's not what attorney it was saying. a delightful week to be doing this he told, he told attorney yeah, they I, Gerald, wait, that it michael was in fact, mike uh, was agreed on the 29th as he said in his emails and you can look at him if you want to. Michael, i did look at him shh, michael wait a minute uh the following weekend <coughs> was New Year's weekend, and, and everything was closed on Monday because of New Year's. So when Attorney Gould's staff got in Tuesday, they shot, the, the retainer should have gone with the engagement letter. Why it didn't, I don't know. But they sent then the retainer, okay. our, uh, yeah, uh, invoice. invoice. And when it came through dated the 3rd, I said, gee, that should have been dated the same day. Those two should have come simultaneously. It's the week between Christmas and New Year's, and I don't know what the attorney's staff was doing, but somebody neglected to put that invoice the next week. But the engagement letter was signed in Mike's presence in his kitchen. Right. On December 29th. So you're erroneous. Okay. So I'm not trying to. The letter had no authority to be signed Wait. by Mary Louise because the only one that can hire an attorney is the town manager through the permission well, of the Board of Selectmen, which I don't understand how you were served as Board of Selectmen for four terms and you don't remember this that. Board. Don't get it. No, I think, the, I think the major issue here is that most people in this town actually can consider the planning board, the board of adjustment, budget committee, et cetera, to be independent bodies right. and to make independent decisions and follow through on those decisions. I mean, it's just like kind of like a, it was probably like a, a knee-jerk reaction more than anything else. Well, it's just naturally what you do next. You know, she was actually instructed by the budget committee. The motion was, unlike what the selectman's lawyer would have us believe from that document, right here. the motion is mischaracterized there, no doubt with some degree of... Uh, 
well, I won't get into why that might be, but the bottom line is the wording was that the chairman was instructed to retain right. an appropriate lawyer. Not to find one, but to retain one. And so it's only reasonable that when she decided to retain one, that she have a retainer set up. And you're I willing mean, to spend that's a lawyer, plus, $550 look, look, just That to wasn't my decision. That was not my decision. The decision money. is being mischaracterized yeah. by your political yeah. document yeah. being yeah. produced by, by your legal mouthpiece. Right. All right? Done. That's the bottom line. I'm done talking. Right? you got to thank God because that political document is doing nothing but stirring up trouble that is totally unnecessary, and I'm really tired of this discussion. Totally. Mm. Can I have a vote on my motion, Madam take Chair? Okay, your motion, please restate for Mrs. Kravitz. To stop it. Stop the noise. To stop, stop discussing the, the, the lawyer's non-existent bill and all noise associated with it. She's got that written down already. I okay, think. and you seconded, Mr. Pierce. Okay, in favor? Unanimous. No, Sonny didn't. No. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Sonny. I'm opposed. Okay. Sonny, do you want to make some more noise every time? Now, before we go, <laughs> since we have the privilege of having uh, Chairman Bridal here, may I ask you a question? Sure, I'll see if I can answer it. Okay. I don't think it is fair for any board of selectmen, I'm not criticizing your board, I'm talking generically, to deny access to the NHMA since all of the taxpayers are paying the fee for the NHMA, it would seem to me more logical if there was uh, unfettered access. You're not going to have that many people. You're not going to have 13 members of the Budget Committee calling Attorney Buckley. But at least take the chains off a little bit and allow a little better access for free counsel Attorney Buckley can't even answer my question about whether there's a conflict with planning, zoning, and budget committee as far as the selectman and the manager. Because in the statute in RSA 37, it clearly says that the manager has control over departments. And planning, zoning, and budget committee are not departments. So it might help to get some of those things clarified instead of being down in the dust all the time and having a chairman not understand that only special chairmen. Is there a question be, in there you're going to ask him? No. Can you can you folks consider maybe loosening the policy a little bit? Maybe allowing better access to the municipal association instead of the clamp that you have on it now. I don't think it's a clamp, but I think we can look at it. I would appreciate if you would do that because it is supposed to serve the town. Yeah. The Municipal Association runs workshops all year long. Mm -hmm. but members of the Budget Committee are welcome to come and mm -hmm. ask any questions they right. want, and they'll answer them. Right. And when you well, we don't know that. Well, it, I, it, may, it may be, yeah. it may be that if a member of the Hampton Budget Committee shows up at one of those workshops and stands up and asks a question, it might be that the response will be, Oh, you're from Hampton. We've been instructed not to answer your questions. You have to get someone from another town to ask you a question, and if you want me to answer it. I, took I mean, it could be, because they don't want to step on you guys' toes, and that's understandable because they, in fact, represent the yeah. Board of Selectmen. Yeah. So naturally, they don't want to step on their client. It makes perfect sense. I understand their position. I thought we were going to move on. Well, we are, and we're talking about NHMA now. No, but I thought I would ask, Rusty, because it is, it's a concern, I think, and uh, I, I had to get permission from you before I could call Attorney Buckley, but then I have a situation where Attorney Buckley and Attorney Gerald don't agree with each other. I think, I think Chairman Bridal indicated so he's an, going an to, inclination he, to look further into it. He's going to talk and to I think we board. should just accept that for now. Right. And barring any additional business, I move to adjourn. At what time? At this present time. Um, that clock doesn't work right. 802. Thank you. 8.02 p.m. I'll accept that time. Second. Thank you, Chairman Bridal, for coming. What, my dear? Thank you. Um, can I get an electronic copy of what you read? She, uh, Regina yes, I said she'll that. send copies to everybody. And, and, and whatever you read. Well, will send it to everybody. But be sure to BCC. The memo's <laughs> not sending anything to everybody. I can't hear Barbara. The memo's well, you will send one to me. Hey!
I can't hear the secretary. What? I'm asking for the memos that, that you read, just the ones you read out. Yes, my dear. For the meeting. Yes. I will do me. that. They will appear. I will. Okay, at 8 -0. Who was the second on the adjournment? Danielle. <laughs> second on the adjournment, right? It was Danielle. God, love us. Aren't you happy, Rusty? See, you don't have to do this. You say, thank heaven. Um, <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you.